bringing the people behind our food to life. Today we're going to learn about canning sardines. Every year, Marjorie and I get together and we do tuna, but we decided to do something a little different. Sardines run on the Oregon coast. They're very high in omega-3. They're very nutritious for you. They're moderately priced. Mm -hmm. And we thought we tried something new and we wanted to share it with you. But before we do that, I wanted Marjorie to go over the basics of pressure canning because that's the safety issue involved here and a very important piece. So Marjorie, what do we need to know? Well, we need to know about a pressure canner because anything that's low acid, which would include vegetables, poultry, meat, fish, uh, needs to be canned where you can get the temperature up to 240 degrees and you cannot do that in a boiling water canner. You have to have a pressure canner. And this is a sample. There are many different varieties. This one has a dial gauge canner and it has a pressure regulator like this. And inside there is a gasket. And this is something that you can uh, replace. If it gets old and cracked, you want to replace that. But it fits snugly right in there. If you're canning a lot every year, sometimes things can get clogged and you never want to have this little ventilator pipe clogged. So just kind of look through it. If you can see the sky, you're good to go. Now the other parts of the canner, this is when the pressure comes up, this will pop up. And when you're all finished and the pressure is going down gradually, gradually, this will pop down. This is the overpressure plug. Many people are afraid of pressure canning because they've heard these stories about canning, canners exploding. This will pop up right out of the canner should something go wrong and the pressure builds up too high. Make sure to have your pressure gauge tested at the beginning of your canning season. It's free. You can take it to your local extension office and they'll make sure that your pounds of pressure are accurately registering on your dial gauge. That's an important thing to do before you start pressure canning. Then the other part of the, the essential part of the canner is to be sure you have a rack. Now if you buy a used one and there isn't a rack in it, any rack that'll just fit the bottom of the canner, sometimes small cookie um, racks, but you don't want those glass jars to be directly in the bottom of the canner because they'll break and you lose your product. The first thing we're going to do while Harriet and I are working on the sardines is we are going to get water in this canner and I have some very hot water here and I'm just going to pour it in. You don't need to measure it. It is two to three inches. And that's and, really different than the, than the boiling water canner that yes. you want water all the way to the top of the jars. Exactly. I'm going to put in a little more. Usually it's two to three quarts and the steam is what prepares and safely pressure cans and cooks that fish. And so the amount of water is just to produce the steam. And the first thing we're going to do is get the water going on, a, on temperature and meanwhile we can be filling those jars. Great. So now on to canning sardines. I have the sardines soaking in a brine. The brine is just made with using a cup of salt to a gallon of water. It's not really necessary for canning the fish, although it does flavor the meat a little bit. And on some fish, it can pull some of the blood that's still in the fish. So you can do it for uh, anywhere from an hour to overnight, depending upon the fish that you're choosing to can. So in this case, I did it about four hours. After I soaked them in the brine, I put them in a little cold water to just clean them a little bit from the brine. And you can see the brine water was a little bit darker. This has been really interesting because with tuna, you don't have to do any of this. And so this has been an adventure with sardines. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't soak them at all. And we use fillets when we do canning tuna, which is different. Then this is going to be our first time with the whole fish. Whole fish. Ooh. No guts, though. No guts, <laughs> yeah. Of course, if you're fishing yourself, you want to have the guts cleaned. And you want to have it cleaned within two hours of catching the fish. You want to gut it. I asked my fishmonger to gut it for me. Uh, if you get them frozen from the coast, usually they need to be gutted when you thaw them. But they freeze them straight off the boat, so that's fine. Now I'm going to just drain them for a second. They are beautiful. Yeah, they are nice. And, and larger. The Pacific Coast sardines tend to be a little bit larger. They are big guys. I yes. was surprised. And it looks like so a trout. It does look like a trout. And you get somewhere between two to three of these to a pint jar. About two to three is what makes a pound. So I'm going to move this over here. And then they've just drained briefly. And I'm going to put them nicely on this sheet. 
Oh, aren't they beautiful? I could help, but you're doing such a good job. Thank you. Okay. So, what do you think, Mar? Do you think we should hack their heads off? Or I'll, I'll keep. Well, I'll I'm try to keep do... one on. Yes. We're doing this with I, you. I mean, some people are queasy about the eyes and the head, but I think you know, if you're going to eat fish, this is the way they are, and so I don't have any problem with just removing the head on the plate. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Off with their head. <laughs> What I've discovered is you kind of turn them first. You want the skin, you want, don't want them to be vertical. You want them to be horizontal in the jar. And I've, you know, made a little circle in it and to put them in the jar like that. But I'm going to try mine with the head off. I wanted to try a few. Oh, well, I find that you can get two or three in it's, the jar. You can see that they're, they're pretty flexible, but you need to, this is where hands come in. yoga. I think it's like fish <laughs> yoga. This is where the uh, your hands come in very. Um, See, I'm going to be able to get hands. three in there because you really want to uh, really push them in. It's the same with any fish or any time you're filling a jar, unless it's fresh peaches. Oops, kind of push push the product in so that the jar is as full as possible. And Ooh, I think I'm going to have sound. room for another. Um, oh, this I is so exciting. What do you think? Because you have to keep an, an inch of head space, and then we're going to put in some I mean, of our seasonings. I think I'm going to just take the head off this one. Well, you go, girl. Because I don't have room for it. That's so exciting. And, uh, and if a little tail sticks up, no, you don't oh, want that. You don't want that. Do you think you got enough an inch head space? I don't know. Well, See, I don't that's know. why. Two to three. These are big boys. Well, I'm, can I cut it in half? You can. All you right. Can. You can See, Harriet's the expert on sardines. Not I'm just yeah, along for the ride here. <laughs> Ask me about tuna. Okay. What about tuna, Marge? It's <laughs> easier. <laughs> okay, so that's there's three in there. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to season these things up. And I'm going to start with half a teaspoon of tomato paste. But, you know, you don't have to be uh, so formal with this. And eh, Marjorie's probably going to just I'm surprised that you're using uh, Aren't you surprised? Yeah. I'm the one that always uses the exact measurement. Yeah, right. I am surprised too. I'm following your bad... Uh, well, you, you just squirt. You know how to squirt. You know how to do it. So I'm going to use a half... She's... Well, who knows what she just used. And then... Um, a teaspoon of, now this is smoky paprika, and you know, the recipe that I saw called for liquid smoke, and I just thought it would be nice to use a smoky paprika. And this one, I got on our trip oh. when I was in, mmm, smell, mmm. Oh, <laughs> that was strong? That, that's good. And that's <laughs> the nice thing about canning. You can experiment with the seasonings, because with pressure canning, the canner's going to do the, all the safe work, and you can just play. You don't need salt. If you, you know, on a low salt diet, just leave it out. And so an eighth of a teaspoon of chili. And, uh, you know, if, it doesn't, if you don't measure. want it spicy, don't put that in. And uh, now these are sort of uh, capers I made myself, actually nasturtium pods. And about a half a teaspoon of that. Oh, what the hay. <laughs> and if some capers go in there, why not? And then a teaspoon of salt. Period is so good at this homemade vinegar. Oh no, a homemade, that's pickled capers. I did use store-bought vinegar, so I'm a... Oh, well, I take that back then. <laughs> yeah, but the capers, nasturtium pods, I mean, please. Okay, and a tablespoon of olive oil. This is a pretty fatty fish. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, I'm going to put a half it. What do you think, Marjorie? I think for flavoring, though, it's nice. And it's not necessary, but we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Like in tuna, you can add oil and water, or you can just pack it in and add nothing at all. So well, look, you have a caper in there. I think that's fabulous. I mean, you could use lemon. You can use lemon rind. Preserved lemon would be really nice, don't you think? A little smoky paprika capers. I think it'd be delightful. There you go. Yeah. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on the top. You don't have to do this either. We don't do it when we are doing tuna though you can. Would you like to do mine also? Oh, sure. And it'll all come together in the canning, so you don't have to worry. And we just want it to be about a... And she's adding more because of the um, space in there. Should I put a little bit more on there? Do you want me to throw that fishtail in there? 
<laughs> That's all right, Harriet. And uh, now I am going to... Okay, we're going to do this thing, which is just to try to get the air bubbles. There are always air bubbles, particularly when you're pouring water and you have something that might catch the water between the layers, like here with the sardines. Here we go. You just want to make sure that the air bubbles come up. And just be careful that you're not poking the fish. Okay, there, I'm going to put you. a little bit more water on there. Sometimes when you do it, the water will go further down, so what the water that you put in in the very beginning will not be the best indicator of how full actually your bottle is. And it there we gets... have a good example. Look how that water finally. Yeah. Do you want more yes. water? Ooh. And what about the other one? Do you want a little bit more? No, it has good. an inch of head. And we want an inch of head space is what we're talking about because when it's in there and it's canning, you don't want the water to be too full so that it comes out of the jar. Would you say that's the reason we do? <laughs> yes. What's uh, the matter, honey? Oh, nothing. Um, Did I now, say something wrong? We're going to put these lids on. <laughs> oh, you're not liking my process. Oh, no, I love it. Uh, okay, we're going to... One of the important things, especially when you're working with fish, is that you might get some oil on the top of that glass rim. So use a little cloth, a clean cloth. Oh, I know what um, you're laughing about. And wipe this off. And then we have these uh, lids, you only use these once, and they've been in some warm water, and that's just to kind of soften the compound. It's not essential. It's going to be plenty warm. And put those lids on. And all that, all that seasoning is just going to totally blend in together when you can it. So I have another one, another one for me. Thank you. And you just put the ring on until you don't, until you just start to hit resistance, and then a little bit more. Sorry, sorry, reaching over, so impolite. All right, we got three lovely jars. And we're okay. just gonna start are we ready? with that now, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we are gonna put these jars in our canner over here that is, the water is very hot. Okay, we have our jars in the in the hot water and I'm going to turn the flame up to high and on a pressure canner there's a little usually a little mark on the lid a V that matches the V in the handle because it's important to get this lid on tightly and so then you're just going to take it and you just pull these two together and you have a nice seal and now this is a very important part of the safety of pressure canning and that in this vent pipe, you'll start seeing some steam come up. And when there's a steady stream, we're going to set the timer for 10 minutes and before we put on the pressure regulator. And what exhausting the canner does is that it gets all the air out because you don't want any air bubbles in there interfering with steam that gets, penetrates that jar and uh, cooks the food to 240 degrees. So, so now this is the point where I would say you have a steady stream and we're going to set the timer for 10 minutes. All right. We have exhausted the canner for our 10 minutes. So now I'm going to slide the pressure regulator right over this vent pipe. And now you want to adjust your stove so that the flame is on high. And then you can see that already the pressure is starting to go up on the dial gauge. And when we get to about eight pounds, I like to start regulating the temperature, turning it down a bit because it can go up really fast. And what we're aiming for is 11 pounds pressure in our dial gauge cannon. It's normal for some water and steam to escape underneath the uh, pressure regulator because that's what it's doing. All right, I am adjusting the temperature of the stove and it's at just under 10 and we're aiming for 11, so it has a little ways to go. And this is where you have to kind of just be here and pay attention, adjust the heat as needed. Uh, and you know, sometimes it'll go up to 12 and sometimes it'll go below 10. And you know, you just have to regulate it and keep an eye on it, but don't freak out about it if it goes up a little bit. But we always suggest that you stay close by because this has to go an 100 hour. minutes. 100 minutes. Yes, one hour and 40 minutes. So I just put a chair out here and bring a book and stay close by because it can go up and down. That's right. Uh, and you want to just keep your eye on it. So you can see that it's right at 11 pounds. And it's, I'm going to 
starting to creep up a little bit. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit. And when you're going to do a canning load, you're not going to do just three jars. You know, with the difference between pressure canner and a water uh, boiling canner is that you can stack jars in a pressure canner and you can get how many f pints into a whole pressure canner approximately? Well, you could get two layers of pints. So you could get maybe 18 jars. 18 jars. Nine or eight, 17. And then with a small squatty half pints, half pints you could probably get three, three rows. So for tuna, that's perfect. So that's going up a little bit higher, but we're not really worried. You just adjust it, and then you'll come to that sweet spot where it's just at the right place, mm -hmm. and then you can kind of relax. And once it gets to 11, we're just gonna let it go. All right. I'm setting the timer for one hour and 40 minutes. It's important to have a timer because if you just watch the clock, you may forget. At least I often forget. You can carry a timer with you, but you really need to stay in the kitchen. And over-processing, though you don't want to do that, is decidedly better than under-processing. You don't want to under-process. But if you go 10 minutes over, you know, do not worry about that either. All right. All right. We have been cooking, and I'm going to turn off the canner. You can move it off the heat or just leave it and don't touch anything. It's going to just slowly cool down, depending on how full it is or the type of metal in the canner. It could take anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes to cool down enough, and so then we can safely remove the lid. So the dye will go back to zero. Zero. This will drop, and then we wait a few more minutes for caution's sake, and then we can remove the lid. And then that's when you take that off. Yes. All right. So meanwhile, we just wait. Okay, I think maybe uh, we break now and make lunch. <laughs> All right, the pressure is down, and I'm going to take off the pressure regulator. You can see no steam, and I'm going to just undo the lid. And very carefully, when you take this off, don't let it come towards you, because that's superheated still. And now we're ready to take them out. It's over boiling temperature. I mean, this was uh, still boiling inside the jar. You can see the bubbles. And just put them on a cloth and let them cool for 12 to 24 hours. So these are some that I did before, and I want to show you what they look like out of the jar. Get one out. Oh, it's a big one. <laughs> they rolled up still. It looks beautiful. Do you like that, Marjorie? Yes. Well, what you're going to like better is the finished product. And I serve them as appetizers. That's some black bread with a little cream cheese, some of the sardines, Bermuda onions, and this one we put a little chopped dill, and this some more of the smoky paprika. And so would you like one, Marjorie? Bon appetit. I may eat. <laughs> bon appetit. Thank you. When those places closed, uh, we were fortunate enough to, to get uh, Shirley Tisher and Janita Ross and Anna Albertson and Maxine DeSwartz uh, to come and work for us. There's no way I can teach that to a lot of people because it, it takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of experience to be able to play like they do. It's an art.